Hi everyone, so today's video is a bit different. I was invited back into my old sixth form to talk about my YouTube experiences and I was like, why not film it? So here it is. I also want to give a big shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and yeah, we'll get on with it. Let's cut to Paige on the train. Hello everyone, so today I'm off to my old sixth form. A lot of people always ask what school I went to and I went to a state comprehensive. I went to see them in Cambridge a few weeks ago when they came on a trip to Cambridge to look around for anyone interested in applying and they asked if I'd come in and talk to their media students about YouTube, which of course I was very happy to do. The sixth form is called Brighton Hove and Sussex Sixth Form College, or Basvik for short. It's a really big sixth form, like over a thousand pupils per year, so 2,000 and something pupils in total, but you just don't get lost in the crowd there. I had such a good two years there. Their teaching was incredible. They gave me so much support with my application to Cambridge. So really, I'm really grateful to them and I'm so happy to be going back. This is the first time I've been back since two years ago now. I'm not gonna lie, two years ago, if you'd have said to me that I was going in to give a talk to a media class, I would have been like, you're joking. Like, this isn't where I saw myself, but I'm so pleased I'm here now. I think it just goes to show you never know the paths that life is gonna take you on. And I'm so glad I set up my YouTube channel and I think it's gonna be really fun to go give this talk today. So yeah, and I get free lunch, so what's not to like? So I'm Paige, I came to Basvik two years ago. I'm now at university studying physics and I started my YouTube channel called Page Y in September 2017 when I was starting uni. I'm known as a Cambridge vlogger or a study tuber now, which means that I basically mostly make videos motivating people to study and vlog my everyday life as well. I currently have 88,000 subscribers and my most popular video has over 900,000 views now. I wanted to make a lasting record of my time at university and Having watched these YouTubers online, I thought, why not start my own vlog? It just sounded like a fun hobby, to be honest. I'd watched a few people vlogging who were at my university before arriving, and it had kind of given me an idea of what it would be like when I got there. I thought that could be helpful for other people. Yeah, I thought, why not? Let's give it a go. I had all the gear. I literally used my phone. I bought a cheap tripod, but I didn't even get that at the start. I literally just propped my phone up on a bookcase and held it and... That was it really, very low tech. Used my laptop and iMovie to edit. Yeah, and I started with the classic video in the bedroom, set up my phone, spoke about A-level results day and that I was off to Cambridge University and I was all very excited. I didn't really expect many people to watch. My mum said to me, oh my god Paige, you've got five whole views. And I was like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> all of my family members have watched. But then I did go off to uni and I stuck at it. I made weekly vlogs of my everyday life. I went to lectures, meeting new people. And suddenly I did start to get a few views. It did involve having to be quite brave, putting myself out there. Like I wasn't, I was settling into a whole new situation, settling into uni, meeting people I'd never seen before. And I generally vlogged about social times with friends, the extracurriculars I got involved with, a little bit of dance, um, I joined my boat club and I vlogged all about that. I also vlogged about my laundry, that's become a bit of a joke now, I have a regular laundry segment. And yeah, I just wanted to try and be relatable. I think the reason people watched was because I kept it very real on camera, I'm just myself, I speak to the camera like it's just a close friend. And yeah, when I got a fair amount of views in the first few months, I was like, oh, I might carry this on actually, it's quite popular. The original intention was to just document my first month or term or so of university, but yeah, it just kind of snowballed from there. I think my main launch pad was that there's a lot of interest surrounding Cambridge, so that really drew people to my videos in the first place. My analytics say that most of my viewers are females aged 18 to 24, and they literally come from all over the world. I have people watching in Australia, all over Africa, like literally everywhere. My university friends have all been very keen to get involved actually. They're always very eager to be featured in my vlogs, which makes life easy for me. I don't have to edit any of them out and stuff. And no, they've all been quite supportive with it, which is always fun. And I think, yeah, the people watching just feel like 
part of our group really, they're at uni with us. My vlogging and editing skills have definitely improved over time. I've gained confidence in vlogging and yeah, I look back at my first few videos and I've come a long way since then with my confidence speaking to the camera and like vlogging out and about in public as well when I'm walking down the street, I used to be quite timid about that and I've never been the most outgoing person, the most confident person, but I think it shows that like anyone can just pick up the camera and vlog and just have the confidence to put yourself out there. I then started branching out from just doing vlogs. In my first term, I literally just filmed my everyday life. Then I started doing study videos, day in the life videos. Yeah, and then I vlogged the lead up to my university exams in my first year and then vlogged throughout exam season and the ups and downs of that and my revision process. In August last year, I had about 30,000 subscribers at the time and then I got featured as creator on the rise on YouTube which meant I was on the YouTube trending tab for a day. Like, I was like below well, like one of Zoella's videos and I was like wow I'm up there with Zoella. But yeah it really is quite a low tech YouTube channel. I haven't bought much equipment at all. I've literally got this tripod, another smaller tripod and I use my phone which I already had. Other YouTubers have big lights and fancy cameras but I haven't really seen the need for that. It hasn't held me back and no one's really complained about the quality online, so I think it's okay. So moving on to feedback and interactions I get from my audience. The number of views and likes I get on my videos is the main indicator of how well a video is doing for me. Like the more likes and views, I think, oh, that's a good video, I'll do more like that. I'm always encouraging viewers to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell and I see when I next upload. My YouTube comments have been mostly positive, which is nice, and I like to give them a like and reply to them. For the very few horrible comments I do get, um, I just ignore them. My general policy is I don't delete them, I don't even look at them, I just ignore them. I know some other people online sometimes, you know, get a bit offended, they'll reply, send long replies, but I just don't even give them the time of day, really. I also get a lot of messages on an Instagram account that I have linked to my YouTube. I get a lot of direct messages on there. Yeah, and I suppose the other main interaction I do is I did my first live stream last week, which was a bit scary. I'm a bit worried about being live to people for the first time, but actually it was quite a lot of fun. You could get like the live messages people were sending in like as the live stream was going on. Yeah, that just upped my engagement with my viewers really. Deciding how much I share with my audience is always tricky. I have to know where to draw the line really. I'm obviously very careful about revealing personal information. Sometimes I have to be very on it when going back through with editing and say, oh, I can't include that bit or oh, I must blur out that particular phone number. So now I'm being approached a lot for um, product placement and collaborations with companies. I have a business email linked to my YouTube account, which people can email me on. Early on, when I had fewer subscribers, I literally just got offers from people to send me stuff for free, and then I would feature it in video in return. And then I didn't really take on any of these until a company came up to me and said, oh, we've got this ground coffee that we'd like to send you and it had all different flavours like vanilla flavour and hazelnut and I thought oh that sounds really nice and I was like yeah sure yeah send me some but anyway the coffee arrived I set my camera up and me and my friends were all trying it and the coffee was disgusting it wasn't just me my friends all thought it was completely gross that was quite tricky but in the end I did just cut all footage of that it was quite a funny video that never made it to the internet but all of us all trying the coffee and that did put me off doing any collaborations with companies or accepting anything to feature my videos for a while. The usual process is that they'll send me an email and if I'm interested in this particular company I'll email back with them saying I'm interested. They'll come back with a brief for what they want, so they want this many seconds in a YouTube video um, giving their product a shout out. And they'll ask for a quote for how much I would charge for that and I'll go back to them and we'll agree a fee, there's a contract that you sign and then I'll produce the content and I always have to send it over to them for review before posting and they'll come back and say if they want anything tweaked. At first it was very difficult to know what to charge, it still is very difficult to know what to charge. Influencers in general aren't very transparent about what they earn so um, it was really just a guess on what to come back to these companies with. Some people do have an agent for dealing with this sort of thing. Um, I don't currently, my dad helps me out a lot with it. I do find that with all these emails coming in and all the messages on my Instagram and my YouTube, it is sometimes quite hard to manage. 
alongside all the editing, alongside all my degree work, so it's a matter of juggling that and asking for help when I need it. I don't take on many sponsorships, I've only done two or three so far. I worry that doing too much sponsored content on my channel would put viewers off and kind of take away from that kind of friendly environment I have going with viewers. I also only promote things that I believe in. I'm quite fussy with what I pick up. Only if I genuinely like the product would I promote it on my channel. In terms of making money from the channel, after your channel meets certain requirements, you can monetize your videos and then put adverts on them. Most YouTubers who have over a set number of subscribers will opt for monetizing their videos um, and then you share the advertising revenue with Google. I earned hardly anything in the first few months but then a few videos, a few study with me videos really kick-started my channel and uh, started earning money which has been very handy because I'm not allowed a part-time job while at Cambridge so that's a source of income for me at the moment. Your earnings fluctuate depending on the time of year um, and how many videos I'm putting up as well. I really want to reach the 100,000 subscriber milestone purely because I want the silver play button that YouTube sends you as um, a reward for hitting 100,000 subscribers. And I really just want to keep motivating people to study. I never set out to do it to make money. I don't really see it as a job. It's very much a hobby. Um, and I'm not really seeing myself making millions from it. I will probably lose viewers when I leave Cambridge just because a lot of my viewers watch because of the whole Cambridge University side of things. There's a lot of interest around the world in it. I'm hoping people will continue to watch a few of my videos after I've left university. The good thing about it is that once I've made these videos, they're up there. I can just leave my channel after I leave university and I may or may not be continuing vlogging at that point, but people can still watch all my old videos and I still will be getting views and interaction from that and hopefully that will help pay off my student loan. That will be good. And yeah, I think that's everything I had to say, really. I'm willing to answer any questions, if you have any. When coming up with video ideas, do you prioritise audience enjoyment? Like, would you make a video that the audience would enjoy, but you wouldn't? I do look at um, the interaction I get from the audience, and yes, when these study with me videos get a lot of views, I am tempted to do more, just because I know that's what the audience enjoy. There is a fine balance with it. I do a few fun videos myself, because I set my YouTube channel up as something for myself really. I've done a few fun videos with my friends, um, cooking challenge videos and all that, which yes, they don't get so many views, but I enjoy making them. I did a few travel vlogs last year that were very much more for fun. And I also like sometimes ask viewers like what they want to see as well. So if I'm going for a patch or I'm not getting so many views, I will just, I can just put a message out to them and say, what sort of videos do you want? And I'll respond to that. How real life is it? I think it's actually very, very real in my case. I've literally, I've vlogged the high points, I've vlogged the low points. So when I'm at university, if I am in a bit of an essay crisis, I'll get on my camera and say, oh, it's, it's all gone to pieces, I don't know what I'm doing, this is not a good week. But then when I'm having fun, I'm really on top of my work, I've got a good exam result, I'll pick up my camera and be like, oh, you know, life is good right now. So it is very real. I do like to keep some of my life private. I'm not vlogging 24 hours a day. My vlogs are normally maybe 15 to 20 minutes long and that's covering a whole week of my life. So that's a lot of hours that don't actually make it into the final video. When first starting, how did you like accumulate a fan base or how did you start getting more subscribers? I didn't really like put much effort into it to start off with. I did have the Cambridge launch pad. I set up my Instagram to try and draw followers in from that route, but I think, to be honest, that hasn't had much of an effect and mostly I get people heading from my YouTube over to my Instagram rather than vice versa. I do put a lot of time into making my thumbnails. Um, you can do all the hashtags on YouTube to try and attract people to my videos that way. Yeah, not much else than that really. I've just been quite lucky. <laughs> do you get recognised in the street? Why well, a lot of students at Cambridge know where I am, I think just because they're interested in the videos I make. I do get stopped by just a lot of freshers mostly who watched my videos in the year leading up to them starting university, see me around. And mostly when I'm out on club nights, to be honest, people come up, they suddenly, when they've had a bit of alcohol, they suddenly get a bit of confidence and think, oh, I'm gonna go and say hi to her. But I, I always like talking to people who watch and yeah, it's nice to interact with viewers. Well, what does your university think about it? Is your mum, you said your dad helps you, but you know, is your mum worried? When I um, started university, we had a talk in Freshers Week about 
filming around college and they were like, you must not film around college without permission. They were particularly touchy about it because they had someone make a documentary video a few years ago um, which was giving the college a bit of bad press. It wasn't great for promoting the college or for prospective students seeing that video. So they were worried about what people were going to put online about them. But I am generally very, very complimentary about the university and my college, so they actually don't have a problem with it. My parents are quite um, taken by it at the moment. When I started, they were like, oh, what's Paige doing? This silly hobby she's got. They just left me to it. But when I started to get a few more views, suddenly they started to take me a bit more seriously. And my dad was like, oh, actually, I'll get involved. And he's actually very keen to help me out now. So. <laughs> He takes it a lot more seriously now. What would you do in like your study videos? Do you like give tips or do you just like film yourself and rise it? Um, so there's a few different kinds. Um, one of them is a real time study with me. So I literally just set up a camera and it'll be an hour long video of me just doing work. Because people I think see it as having a study buddy. So they'll just put me up in the background while they're working and it motivates them to keep going. I can see maybe why people find that helpful because when I'm at university I think other people working around me definitely motivates me to work as well. Um, and then the other kind I do is where I'll film like time lapses and speeded up clips of me studying throughout the day and I'll voice over what I'm studying. Uh, what is your uh, favourite uh, revision process? I'm a big fan of flashcards for GCSEs, for A-levels, I'm still at university now, I make flashcards on pretty much all my course content, like just the key definitions, key formulae in my case, the things I need to remember. And once I've made those flashcards, and I'll try and go through them every day, like I won't get through the whole pack, but even if I just do a few while I'm just brushing my teeth or just on the train, then that helps. And then after I've done those flashcards, I'll just do tons and tons of past paper practice under time conditions. For my maths A levels, I think I literally did every single past paper there was, and that just meant like I just knew what was coming up. Like once you leave Cambridge, do you have any ideas of what you're going to film and like what your videos are going to be like? So it depends what I'm doing. So at the moment I'm between either going into astrophysics research, in which case I'd do a master's and a PhD, whether that be at Cambridge or elsewhere, I don't know. Or I'm looking at becoming an actuary, so I've got an internship for this summer using stats and stuff to assess risk. I assume that's for me, in which case I'd graduate Cambridge next year. I really wouldn't be able to film when I'm in a office job but um, if I'm still in a study environment I would still film but I think I, jet, I will carry on just because I enjoy it so much and it would probably be more sit down videos at home rather than what I'm doing day to day. Hey everyone so I've just got back from my visit to my old sixth form college and I had such a lovely time. Thank you so much for having me Basvik. it was great to be back. I hope I didn't bore your students with my talk about YouTube. I'm actually quite passionate about talking about it because it's become such a hobby of mine and I'm so pleased I started YouTube. In any way that I can help their media students I am very much up for it. I also went and spoke to the Oxbridge coordinator at my old sixth form and it was nice catching up with them and yeah in general it was very nice to be back. I was walking around and thinking I could very easily just walk into my old maths classroom now. Like I almost went on autopilot and went to my chemistry lesson like it was so weird being back. You can do very, very, very well at state comprehensive sixth forms. I hope it just shows that if you are at a state comprehensive sixth form that you can get into Cambridge or get into Oxford if you want to. And it's not just for people who have been to private schools. Like I've come from Baswick to Cambridge, I've settled in so well and I was lucky because I know Baswick has such a great support scheme for making applications to Oxbridge and as a result Baswick are like one of the top state comprehensive sixth forms for getting people into Oxford and Cambridge. They get a fair number of us in each year. I just hope that in the future that more state comprehensive sixth forms can get this sort of Oxbridge application support in place. Not much else to say, had a great time today. And I just want to give another shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. It's a beautiful and powerful online platform on which you can build your own website. It's so flexible, whether you're an artist, designer, you own a restaurant, any sort of website or online store you want to build, you can use Squarespace to do it. Their templates are literally award-winning. They have 24 seven customer support. It's an all-in-one 
one platform. There's no upgrades involved or anything like that. If you go to squarespace.com forward slash page Y, you can get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase as well. So I'll leave the link in the description below so you can check it out if you want to. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please do give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to see more videos from me. Follow me on Instagram and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.